project specifically. Did you have something you wanted to add? Um, the only thing maybe to add to this is that what they're looking at is starting um, in a small sort of a pilot project um, approach. So looking at some serpentine lands that SPI owns that they're de definitely not going to replant and branching out there to federal uh, Forest Service land and also SPI land and then also those private parcels. So kind of working outwards to create those fuel breaks and those fire breaks in the most meaningful way. Um, SBI has a lot of land in that area and they've indicated that they're not interested in replanting. So it could be really good uh, fire break strategically in that way. Uh, but there's a, a huge research component to that as well with UC Cooperative Extension, CSU Chico, and uh, some Davis professors also looking at the best ways to maintain a fire break. So looking at pile burning, grazing, um, getting some other um, mastication, those types of, of efforts in a way. And so it's over a 10 to 12 year period. So there'll be, it's a big research component to that too, so that we can provide that to other areas of the California basically. Any, any questions? What, what's the SBI's reason for not replying? I mean, you can't speak for them, but sure. is, there a, is there a management reason for that? Uh, well, likely the fact that it's a really bad area to have fires. It's it's a really uh, steep canyon. It's heavily brushed. Um, I, like I said, I can't speak for them. Yeah, but so um, it that sounds like to me you're saying is that they don't want to put any resources there because they can't see any value coming back out of yeah, it. Yeah, this isn't this, the first fire that's happened in Jarbo Gap. Serpentine soils, too, are just not very productive. Yeah. yeah. So the trees are really slow. Jonathan? Have you asked SPI if that area at all is part of or includes any of the land that they're looking at strategic fire breaks across the landscape because I know SPI is now looking at the entire North State and trying to coordinate private landowners and putting these fire breaks in and since there's sort of a start there already what if anything might they do one would they include it and two you know how might they what might they do even if they don't replant they can still maintain it as a as a fire break um, I haven't had those conversations. Um, I'm, I'm actually not with the Butte County RCD. Uh, I'm with Butte County, but um, that's a really good, that's something I would like to know as well. <laughs> and their new watershed coordinator who's going to be coming on at some point. Right. For uh, and Butte yeah, County as might well, well be an DSC. opportunity to enlist their help in that one as, as well. Absolutely. Well, that's my point. What, what do you think likes to grow back? Unflammable material? <laughs> <laughs> Poison oak. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's the problem, in a sense, that no management is really bad management for the people that don't want to get burned up. But they're they're open as a partner to this project in maintaining a fuel sure. break in yeah, strategic yeah. areas. Yeah. Have, have they looked at reburning as an option? Uh, because landscape scale burning with low um, the liability factor is pretty low right now uh, and the cost <laughs> cost is right it's cost effective at landscape scale um, I, you probably know professor Don Hankins from CSU Chico I know well from my do right and um, he's a, a big part project component of this too so I know there's going to be a, a big prescribed burning component as part of uh, one of the maintenance options as well too in the research side of it so yeah but that's a good point um, yeah we work both on the California Indian Water Commission yep, exactly for, yeah. so we'll have all of his great input to the table as well with that project any other questions if not I'll entertain a motion to move resolution 18 19-4 we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. Thank you. Now, just before we take a short break, uh, we have the gentleman who has been instrumental in uh, putting this whole IRWM uh, and a number of, of other grants, who is going to be leaving us. And uh, he isn't leaving the county yet. He'll be there at the end of June, but this is his last IRWM. So I'd like to recognize Randy Wilson, our planning director, 
And to that end, we have a certificate for you. We're too cheap for a frame. <laughs> Certificate of Appreciation uh, in gratitude for your guidance as program manager overseeing the completion of the Upper Feather River Integrated Regional Water Management Plan 2016 and Prop 50, which was a huge no. headache, <laughs> implementation projects and as program manager and support for the Upper Feather River Integrated Regional Water Management Program, awarded this day, 3rd of May, 2019. Thank you. Thank you. I have to tell you, it's been a pleasure working with everybody, and retiring has both pluses and minuses. There are some people you just don't want to see again, <laughs> but uh, there are a lot of, there, there are some things, and Sherry and I have had these conversations recently. There's a lot of folks I'm really going to miss. I'm going to miss the ranchers of the Sierra Valley, all the ranchers I've worked with here, and all the people I've ever worked with in Plymouth County, and it's really a hard thing to do, but some decisions you need to make. I make this decision. But it's not without a lot of sadness about certain things that I've been doing here for a long time. So I thank you all. And I want to thank everybody for their participation in getting this plan done. Because it's a monumental thing to get all these people together to work up something. And Uma, who is the primary author of the plan, in creating what I think is um, and when it was adopted, it was the first amendment Prop 1, uh, a really fine plan that I think benefits everybody in the long term. So thank you. And thank you.